Hi guys, it's Kelly and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing episode five of the seven sample series. You may have noticed that my background is looking a little bit different today. I am in between a new filming spot and my old filming spot. So for now, we're just going to film in my room. So welcome to my bedroom. <laughs> If you're new to my channel, welcome. Please show the love by commenting on the video, giving this video a like, and or subscribing to the channel for future content. Also, make sure if you subscribe that you hit that alarm bell to receive notifications of future videos. Okay, so let's dive right in. As always, today we have seven samples. Some of them I have smelled before, some of them I have not, and I'm gonna, oh, and one of them is actually a full bottle that I own. Um, so I'm gonna go through each one and redo the notes, um, do a little sniff test, give you my honest review, let you know if I think that they're full bottle worthy or not. And at the end of the video, I'll also rank it and let you know which ones I think are the best and which ones I think are the worst. So let's dive right in with our very first fragrance today. We've got Aesop's Marrakesh Intense. This is actually the full bottle that I have. I picked this bottle up at the Aesop store in Surfer's Paradise, Australia at the beginning of 2020. So obviously I know that I already love this fragrance, but I wanted to include it in this video today. So Aesop's Marrakesh Intense has top notes of cardamom, cloves, and bergamot, mid notes of rose, jasmine, and neroli, and base notes of sandalwood and cedar. So usually I'm not a huge fan of clove. Um, I don't know if any of you guys went through this phase as well, but when I was like 12, I thought it was cool to smoke clove cigarettes. <laughs> and now whenever I smell anything clove, I'm just like, Bleh. it literally makes me want to gag. So I'm really shocked that I love this fragrance as much as I do. Um, but I think it's because the cardamom really balances out the clove in the top. Yeah, it's just like a really pretty spicy, um, warm, cozy, but also kind of like fresh and citrusy. Oh, from the bergamot. There we go. Um, yeah, it's really nice. It's unisex. I think, I honestly think it leans a little bit more masculine than feminine. This reminds me a little bit of, there was this Bay Rum fragrance back in like the early 2000s that guys were wearing. This bartender that I worked with wore it every day. And so this fragrance kind of reminds me of him. It's like a very, yeah, just kind of like fresh, spicy, clean man scent, <laughs> but also works really well on women as well. It kind of has this like sort of like rummy aspect kind of, but there's no rum listed in the notes. So I'm not sure where that's coming from. The cedar wood is pretty prominent as well. I'm not really getting the floral notes, um, but that might be because my nose is just a little underdeveloped. Yeah, so overall I really love this fragrance. Um, it works really well in hot weather. Um, it works really well like just out of the shower, day or night. Um, it's just an all around really uh, clean, warm, spicy fragrance. So is this full bottle worthy? Obviously, I have a full bottle. Um, I would definitely, of course, recommend um, sampling anything that I share with you today. Just sample before you buy, unless it's like $30 or under. I mean, I don't know, maybe you have a bigger budget than me, but I always just recommend sampling for yourself before you buy a full bottle. But if you end up buying a full bottle of something and you don't like it, it's pretty easy to get rid of things on Mercari. A lot of people are looking for used fragrances on Mercari, so that's an option as well. So yeah, Aesop Marrakesh Intense, definitely full bottle worthy. Okay, moving on to number two, we have a fragrance that I've previously reviewed on this channel. It's by Blue Hill Fragrances and it's called Zest. And I am really like inspired by this fragrance because on their website, they say that they are with this fragrance really trying to capture the smell of, new, of a New England summer. And I grew up in New England, I grew up in Massachusetts and I kind of agree that like New England summers have this very distinct smell. And so when I read that before I sniffed it, I was like, is, are they actually going to nail this? Like it's, I, I don't know. I was, my expectations were very low. And when I first smelled it, I was just like, it's crazy spot on. So Blue Hill Zest has top notes of lime essence, sweet orange, fresh cut lemon, bergamot, and lavender, mid notes of Lang Lang, Mimosa, and Neroli, and base notes of white musk and grapefruit. And this literally just nails it on the head. It's 
it's so crazy how this like actually smells like summer in New England. Like I've lived in many different places in the country. I've lived in Massachusetts, California, Texas, and Tennessee. And I've spent a decent amount of time in Florida. And I, this, it just, this is Massachusetts in the summertime. Like it just is what it is. It's crazy. So um, up at the top, it's very much like the lime and the um, bergamot, I feel like are the most prominent at the top. And then quickly, it. so this is the thing with this fragrance, as impressed as I am, and some of you may have seen my video on this already, so you know what I'm about to say. As impressed as I am with this fragrance, something happens for me in the mid, I don't know if this happens for everyone, but within like two minutes of me spraying this, it dries down to the smell of a stinky armpit. And I don't know, I don't know what that is. Um, like I'm definitely smelling the neroli, but there's something that smells kind of like salty about it. And maybe it's the mimosa or it also could be cause in the base we've got the white musk and the grapefruit. I wonder if it's actually the grapefruit that's adding like a little bit of like crispy zing to the neroli. If I focus on the grapefruit and not on stinky armpit, then it smells okay. But if I even let my head go to that place of like, like remember when we were in high school and there was like the guys that played all the sports and sometimes they like wouldn't shower after they played sports, they would just spray like a citrus perf or citrus fragrance on themselves to kind of like cover it up. Like that's sort of what I'm getting. Um, but it's not enough to make me not want to wear it. Like it smells so good. It smells exactly like summer in New England. So I think that this is a perfect scent for summertime. It's a perfect like clean, fresh scent, perfect for like just out of the shower, um, going to run errands, going to work, like it's nice and light. Um, it's inoffensive, even though I said it smells like a sweaty armpit, like it's still very inoffensive. Um, and I looked on the website and it's only $40 for a 30 ml bottle, which I feel like is pretty inexpensive given how well this is blended. Like I really do think that this is a a great fragrance. So, um, is it full bottle worthy? Maybe. I don't think it is for me just because I kind of can't get over that sweaty armpit thing. Um, but I almost feel like it's worth having in my collection because it is such a masterpiece and it does really smell like summer in New England. So it's like a little bit nostalgic for me as well because I haven't lived in Massachusetts in almost 20 years. So it's like very nostalgic. Um, but yeah, I would definitely get your nose on this and I would even say it's a safe blind buy if you really like lime, citrus, um, neroli fragrances. I would, because of the price, I would almost say it's a safe blind buy. But yeah, is it full bottle worthy? Perhaps, but maybe not for me at this time. Moving on to number three, we have something I have not gotten my nose on yet. So this will be a blind sniff, which is always very exciting. And this is East West Bottlers Southern Living 1966. Bell. It has a super long name. Um, I believe that East West Bottlers is a perfume company. They could even be a local Austin company, a brand, I'm not sure. Um, and I think that this might be a collaboration with Southern Living Magazine. Again, I'm not so sure. I didn't like dive that deep into the research. Uh, but the fragrance itself is called 1966. And they have a men's version and a woman's version. So this is Bell, which is the women's version. And this fragrance has notes of magnolia flower, tea, olive, amber, vanilla, and jasmine. So we're gonna give this a sniff. I got this in an olfactif box a couple months ago and I just never, I never sm smelled it. Ooh. Interesting. This is really pretty. Um, the vanilla and jasmine, I would say, are the, mo the most prominent. I can smell the magnolia flower a little bit. I'm not getting any olive. Definitely getting some amber. This is really pretty, but I I would say that it kind of smells like a sort of typical um, kind of like vanillic floral bath and body works lotion, perhaps. Like it's pretty, but it smells familiar. It doesn't smell that unique. I'm curious the price on this. Um, I feel like I may have seen that it was 70 bucks for a bottle. Yeah, this is pretty. I mean, I, I know that there's for sure some people that would smell this and like fall in love with it because it's definitely like a very pleasing 
scent. It's a nice like summer, maybe like nighttime in the summer scent. Um, the jasmine is really well blended with the vanilla and the amber. I kind of wish I could get the olive. I'm not getting it. Um, yeah, I feel like this is just like, it's just kind of a run of the mill approachable summer fragrance. Is it full bottle worthy? Not personally for me because I feel like I've smelled this so many other times. Um, but I definitely think that this would be full bottle worthy for maybe people that are just starting their collection. Um, maybe you're new to fragrance. I feel like this would be a really easy fragrance to, to start with. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. It's, it's pretty good. I'm just not like mind blown by it. Okay, moving on to number four, we have a new fragrance from the house of, and I'm going to butcher this, Atat Libre d'Orange. <laughs> My French is terrible. Uh, it's called Ghost, The Ghost in the Shell. Apparently there's a movie also called Ghost in the Shell. I know nothing about it. I just saw it when I was researching the notes. Um, I've seen a couple of people review this fragrance and some people have absolutely loved it and some people are absolutely hating it. I have not been impressed with this house. Like there's nothing that I've smelled of this house so far that I'm like super impressed by and it kind of bums me out because I want I want to fall in love with this house. Um, but I, I also have so much more that I need to try from the house. So um, I did smell this when I first got this in my olfactif box like a couple months ago but I can't remember what it smells like. And I'm just gonna share the notes with you first and then I'll do like, it's gonna be kind of a semi-blind sniff at this point. So it's a very synthetic fragrance. Um, it's got top notes of aqual, hexyl acetate, and yuzu, mid notes of skin, milk, mugane, mugane, which I don't know what that is, and jasmine, and base notes of ambroxan, vinyl guaiacol, and moss. So real quick before I even spray this, I know because I've been chatting with some of you guys in the comments and over on my Instagram, I know that a lot of you that follow me or that are subscribed to this channel have an issue with Ambroxan and that you, you're just nose blind to it. Like you just can't smell it. What's the word? Anosmic? Like you can't smell it. So I don't know if you're going to be able to smell this fragrance. I'm guessing because it has some of those other synthetic notes in it. Um, and with the jasmine, I'm guessing that maybe you will be able to, but we'll see. So I just wanted to prep this real quick because I know so many of you have reached out and you're like, I can't smell anything with Ambroxan in it. And I get it. I'm not totally anosmic to Ambroxan, um, but yeah, there I do have that experience with some scents. So I totally get how frustrating that can be. Let's go ahead and give this a sniff. I just sprayed it all over my hands by accident. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. This smells really synthetic to me. Um, ooh. I definitely, it's very confusing. Like part of me is like, ooh, and the other part of me is like, ooh. <laughs> um, up at the top, it quickly, it's like the synthetic kind of screechy thing that quickly, quickly melds to a yuzu that quickly melds into like a floral kind of shampoo smell. Um, it's pretty light, like I'm having to like, like really snort to get the smell. So I think that might be the Ambroxan doing its thing. Um, yeah, the note of skin. I mean, yeah, I guess. Clean skin. It definitely has this like clean kind of soapy skin vibe to it. Um, this, I feel like this would give me a headache. Like this just smells, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Like it just kind of has this like annoyingness to it. Yeah, I don't know. This is not full bottle worthy for me. I know some people love this. You might really appreciate it if you like this kind of like synthetic musky skin sense. Like it's sort of in the same camp of um, not a perfume. I don't know what. Um, DS and Durga, I don't know what is the name of it. Or like uh, Glossier's You. Or what's that other one that's similar you might like it if you like that stuff. Um, if you're like a fan of Molecule One and you're looking for something similar and thinking this is it, it's not it. <laughs> it's not it at all. Yeah, I don't know, I'm just very unimpressed. But if you want something like really light and clean and kind of soapy and sort of uh, shampoo-y kind of basic, I don't know, this could be the fragrance for you. But for me, this is a hard pass. 
Moving on to number five, we have from one of my all time favorite houses, Imaginary Authors. This is Whispered Myths. I have a couple samples of this fragrance and it's funny, I keep like smelling it and then like forgetting what it smells like and then not going back to it. So I figured today I would give it like an actual real effort and try to remember what this smells like so I can make a decision about whether or not I want a full bottle of this or not. So this is Whispered Myths. It has notes of Cambo Cambodian oud, <laughs> cantaloupe, ambrette, cedar, and honey. Um, if you've been watching my channel for a little bit, you know that ambrette and I are not super tight. I don't generally like ambrette. Usually if I um, usually if I smell something that has ambrette in it, I'm really turned off. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. Mm, okay. Oh wow, this is really interesting. So it's like straight up oud and can't like straight up oud and cantaloupe in the beginning. It's more oud than cantaloupe. It's like the cantaloupe is just giving this sort of like sweet rounded edge to the oud. I'm not smelling the ambrette, which is a good thing. Definitely getting some some of the cedar. The honey is super light. I feel like this is m like mostly an oud fragrance. You'd have to like really like oud to wear this. Um yeah, personally for me, I'm not big on oud. I haven't really like taken the plunge yet into the oud uh, note column, <laughs> but as it is right now, it's just kind of like on me, it just smells a little like rubbery in general. So I just, I just haven't gone there fully yet, but um, I do want to kind of wear test this on my skin and see what happens. Actually, I'm going to give myself a little spray right now. Cause I feel like this, I mean, everything that Josh Meyer does is like so well done. I just, I'm a huge fan of his. I think he's an expert perfumer. Um, and so like, I know that this is a quality perfume. It definitely smells different on my hand. Okay. So on my skin, I'm getting way more honey, um, and way more cedar than I was on paper and less cantaloupe, but the oud is still like very, very much there. Yeah, so for me, this is not full bottle worthy only because I'm not sold yet on the note of oud. However, I can really appreciate this fragrance. And I think that um, if you're an oud fan, if you're a honey fan and an oud fan, I think you're gonna love this. If you're a Josh Meyer fan, like get your nose on this anyway because obviously we wanna smell everything that he puts out. Um, but for me at this time, this is not full bottle worthy. Okay, moving on to number six. We have a fragrance by the house Nest. And this is called Indigo. I've had a decant of this for a hot minute, like over a year, I think. And I just have not gotten around to playing with it. I got this and Citrine and I haven't really played with either one. And then I saw, I can't remember who it was, but one of the fragrance reviewers that I watch on YouTube recently spoke about this fragrance and was saying how much she loved it. And I was like, oh, I need to give that like a full chance, right? So that's what we're doing today. So Nest Indigo has notes of fig and, uh, top notes of fig and bergamot, mid notes of tea and cardamom, and base notes of cashmere wood. I love fig in fragrances. I love cardamom. Um, I generally like bergamot. I'm not like, I'm not like in love with bergamot, but generally I'm good with it. And then I also really like the scent of tea. So let's give this a sniff. Not like tea is just one scent, but you know. Ooh. Ooh. This smells really, really good. Like really good. Wow, this is like, ooh, this is like blowing my mind a little bit actually. I'm like shocked. Wow, this is really, really surprisingly delicious. I had kind of written this house off a little bit to be 100% honest. I just kind of put them in my head in like the category of like scents that get put out by like anthropology and like just stuff that maybe just doesn't last. This smells so good, you guys. Like, wow. Okay, so it's just, it kind of reminds me of um, did anyone drink Nez tea, Nest tea, 
like the bottles of iced tea in the late 80s, early 90s when it was like a big thing and there was like the lemon flavored nest tea. Like kind of smells like that. I want to spray this on my skin. Oh, shoot. I lost my blotter. I have no, it just fell into the abyss of used blotters and I have no idea which one it is now. So we're just going to move over to it being on my hand. Yeah, this is really, 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 really pretty. It's just like this marriage of the fig and the tea at the top. That's kind of like sweet and slightly citrusy, but kind of soft and feminine, but sort of like playful. It's really pretty. Definitely has like a full blown summer, like it smells like summer. Um, and then, yeah, you get a little bit of the bergamot. The cardamom is pretty in the background. Um, the cashmere wood, I mean, I don't, what is that? I don't know, but I guess I can smell it maybe. Yeah, this is pretty, and it's interesting, like on skin, it's doing something a little bit different. It's not like, it's not drying down as much as wonderfully as I wanted it to. Like it's kind of muting as it dries down, but that could be because my hands are dry. I haven't put any lotion on my hands today. Like that could be that, right? I also recently, I know this is a huge conversation in my community and in other fragrance communities, this conversation about how to make fragrances last longer and how all these like high end fragrances that cost like $300 a bottle just disappear within like an hour. Um, and I recently heard someone mention that it could have something to do with the pH of your body. So if your pH is off, it could alter, it could make fragrances smell sour on you. It could also like alter um, your ability to kind of hold on to scent. So that's just something to think about. Yeah, this is really pretty though. I would definitely, I would definitely get a full bottle, I think. Um, I kind of want to play with it a little bit more though, because the opening, I want the opening to be what it is the entire time. Like I'm not as in love with the dry down as I was with the opening. And I wonder if that would change if I like literally just doused myself with it, got it all over my clothes. You know what I mean? Sometimes that can have a different effect. Um, it's really pretty though. Definitely at the top of my list. Jury's out for me on whether or not it's full bottle worthy for me. I would definitely recommend checking this out if you like fig and tea fragrances. Okay, moving on to our seventh and final fragrance, we have one by Sergei Luton, and it's called Santal Blanc. And this one has notes of white sandalwood, pink pepper, musk, iris, and cinnamon, which I feel like the cinnamon is a super random note in here. <laughs> um, not a huge fan of cinnamon. Usually hate it in fragrances, but uh, I've heard really good things about this fragrance, and so I'd like to give it a shot. Um, I'm gonna put it on my pinky. Okay, this is definitely, I want this in a spray vial because this is really pretty and interesting and I feel like I need more, I need more of it sprayed. I need it sprayed on me. It's a very clean kind of milky, creamy sandalwood. It's really pretty. Um, yeah, it's very like, actually this is really nice. It's very like, uh, milky, almost soapy, irisy, musky sandalwood. It's super clean. This is really pretty. Super clean, kind of like ethereal. I'm not really smelling the cinnamon. Maybe a little, maybe a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. Enough for it to not be a problem. Um. Yeah, this is really, really, really pretty. I want to, um, somebody was telling me that you can like put a spray, that you can just like put one of these guys into these little dabber bottles. I just don't think I have any sprayer bottles that are like short enough to fit in there. So I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Uh, because I think that if I had the opportunity to spray this on myself, I think I would absolutely fall in love, to be honest. Because it's really pretty on skin, it's kind of disappearing fast, but again, like like I said, my hands are pretty dry. Um, but yeah, I really love that like creamy sandalwood. I'm trying to love the whole Santal 33 vibe. 
I'm not quite there yet. I'm playing with it with like different temperatures and humidity levels and I'm like really giving it all my effort to love that fragrance. Um, but this is more my style sandalwood. I really like that kind of like creamy musky sandalwood that's almost like a skin scent. Yeah, so it's kind of like disappeared on my finger. Um, so yeah, I need more time with this. Is it full bottle worthy? Maybe, we'll see, to be determined. Okay, so that's all of the seven samples. Now I'm gonna go through and rate them in order, which I think is gonna be difficult because um, I was really surprised by both the Nest Indigo and the Santal Blanc. Um, and I need more time with both of them. But as it stands right now, I would put um, the Aesop Marrakesh Intense at number one, because obviously I already have a bottle of that. I think it's a beautiful fragrance. Um, in number two, I would put uh, the Nest Indigo. At number three, I would put Sergi Luton Santal Blanc. At number four, I would put at number four, oh, this is tricky. Um, shoot, I would put it number four. I would put Whispered Mist actually, because even though like I wouldn't get a full bottle of it, I really appreciate its artistry. So that would be number four. Number five, I would put um, Blue Hill Zest for the same reason. Like I really just appreciate what they've created with that. Uh, number six, I would put East West Bottlers, Southern Living, 1966 Belt, still a great fragrance. Like I, if somebody gifted me a bottle of that, I would not be sad. Um, would I go out and like actively seek to purchase it? Probably not. Um, and then at number seven, I would definitely put the ghost in the shell because it's just like not my kind of fragrance. And I just feel like it kind of fell flat to be honest. I don't think it was a masterpiece, which is how I feel about everything that I've sniffed from that house is I'm just kind of like, meh, you know, which bums me out because like so many people rave about that house. So anyways, um, that is how I would rank them in order. Let me know in the comments, have you tried any of the fragrances that I mentioned? Do you have questions about any of the fragrances that I mentioned? Um, do you love any of them? Do you hate any of them? What are your thoughts on Ghost in the Shell? I know a lot of people are going to comment about that because they feel like people have very strong opinions about that fragrance. And um, yeah, let me know like what are some new fragrances that you've tried that you've been surprised by. And before we close out our video for today, like I said, I'm a brand new channel, so if you guys want to support me that would be amazing ways that you could do that is to like this video you could subscribe you could come over to my tiktok and instagram and show some love over there i've linked those below in the description box leave a comment say hi um if there's a perfume that you want to see reviewed let me know i would love an excuse to buy some fragrances <laughs> and that is all for today thank you so much for stopping by and i'll see you in the next video bye <clears throat> start over start over there i've linked those um i've 